What do you want for your birthday, Nick? A win. <laughs> There's a lot of things I want for my birthday. Um, and I'll take a win. That'd be nice. What's that going to take against in one of the arguably toughest road trips in football? Yeah, it's, it, it's a good challenge for us. A really good challenge. Against a team that they're likely to get a couple back as well. Uh, and, you know, really experienced players from important to the way they play. Although they've played a younger group last week and got the result. So uh, they're, in, they're in good nick. It's a great challenge for us. A couple of those players back have some pretty handy defenders. Yep. Mark's inside 50 has been highlighted a lot, I think only two in the showdown. How do you address that? Yeah, there's a lot to it. There's a, there's a fair bit in, in that stat. Um, we've, we're working on those areas of our game. I think we spoke about it post the last game. You know, building the ball up helps with that, changing lanes with the footy, challenging the opposition when, when you have the opportunity to, you know, using your advantage on the ground. We, um, in a high pressure game, that's harder to do. And we're a young group that are working on how we do that and challenging ourselves week, week after week around how we deliver the ball to our forwards. Um, we had plenty of opportunities going inside 50 on, on the weekend. So we're getting some parts of our game right, which is that you know field position, um, owning the game at times. It's now a matter of the, putting the polish on top. And we, we've gone through that, the detail of that as a group, and we'll continue to work through it. it it's not something that you just click your fingers and fix straight away, but we, we got to train in the wet again today and, and work on what we, we we did on the weekend. I, it probably won't be wet in WA this weekend, but you know, we, we keep working on all the areas, all the areas of our game as, as we go and we grow. Have you settled on who replaces Murph and Nick? We haven't yet, so we've just come off the track. We'll, we'll go straight into match committee, and um, we've had a look at what we look like. Uh, it's quite challenging, actually, to lose two of your, your pressure forwards. Very similar players. They bring a certain... Um, certain effort and intensity in our front half that you know, even in that game to lose both players early in the game um, it affected the way we went about it in the end it was and and <clears throat> to the boys credit they the effort didn't drop off we had to try a number of different things with you know Sloaney went forward for periods of the game and so we're gonna have to have a look at that for this weekend exactly who replaces those guys um, because we do want to keep that speed and intensity in our front half. Shane, the chance obviously he's played, but I mean, you're not exactly close with small forwards, are you? Outside of that's probably Tariq and then a shuffle from your midfield. Do you know mm. whether are you leaning towards a, a shuffle or just bringing in a fresh face? Shane's a big chance. Um, you know, Shane, Shane went out not through lack of effort uh, playing for the team. It was really with Shane, it was, we, we were just trying to find some form for him. He, he just wasn't impacting the games as much as we'd like and as much as, he, as he'd like. Uh, sometimes just that, that small jolt and uh, that reset uh, can help a player. It's also a chance for him. It, he's a, a WA boy, so he's really keen to play. He's let me know in, in no uncertain terms, um, which is great. It, it's, you, know, you want guys to, coming in that really are chomping at the bit to play again. He, at his best, he can really bring some heat in our forward line and bring pressure, but he's, he's almost that hybrid forward. Um, but we'll have to shuffle at, at a point this week. Um, and that might be, that'll be about bringing in guys that are that live in the values at SANFL level, um, playing with confidence that deserve to come into the team. And whether we then have to shuffle through maybe mid forward or whether we look at half back up to mid, we'll, that'll be something we'll decide this afternoon. How close is Tariq from uh, getting the season passed? Well, Tariq's game, if it's played on his terms at the moment, he, he's a really exciting footballer. He's got some fantastic talent. He's got elite speed. Um, unfortunately, when you play at, at a higher level, the, the game's not just given to you on your terms. And so what we're working with, with Tariq, we don't expect him to be Rory Sloan or, or Sam Berry, who you've seen come in, and, and he's a battering ram. Um, but what we do expect is Tariq to be to a certain level in that contested part of the game um, and he's working on that and he'll continue to work on it but um, he's got some weapons he's really got some weapons and you know he shows some stuff at SNFL level where it looks really exciting we um, we're not saying he's that far away we, we've discussed him for this week is that is that a possibility but I don't think just at this point I, I don't think we want to throw him in the deep end just yet how are um, 
Uh, so, well, Ned, so McHenry, Ned's uh, recovered well. It, it did take him a, a little bit of time. Um, so he started his protocol a day later than, so he was still a little bit weary on the Sunday. <clears throat> um, but he's going really well now. Uh, he's back running, uh, completing sessions, no contact just as yet. I think he starts that next week um, and should be available next week if everything goes to plan. Uh, and Murph's obviously, uh, you know, he's going to be eight to ten weeks off of that syndesmosis uh, operation. But he's had that done, was in the club today, um, up and about, as up and about as you can be. Obviously really disappointed that he won't be part of what we're working on for the next eight to ten weeks, but he's very much a part of our future. I noticed Crouchy in the cafe having a coffee while the boys were out on track. Is he still in line to play a Sanford game in the next couple um, of weeks? We didn't train today. Uh, he trained Tuesday. Matty, um, and pulled up quite sore from Tuesday, which is, is concerning, is, is quite concerning. So um, he's going to have a, another conversation with a specialist. We want to make sure we're on, on still on the right track here. We're expecting Matty, um, you know, maybe getting a half a game at SNFL level in the next sort of one or two weeks. And his progression was going really well up until Tuesday. I think he got five plus Ks done in the session. Um, worked really hard, was moving quite well and he felt good, but pulling, the way he's pulled up, um, I just had a chat to him then and um, I guess I'm, I'm a little concerned a as our uh, high performance guys and so we're going we're gonna to have a look at that. He'll probably catch up with a specialist that he's been talking to right throughout this process and, and have another look at it, but yeah, a little bit concerned. When you say have a look, are you talking continue the same rehab path or is there a chance that he needs to take any other action? Well, it's another conversation. I hope it's not other action. Other action is, is an operation. I hope that's not the case. Uh, but the fact that he's pulled up sore at, at this stage again, and it's, um, you know, he's had moments where, as you do when you're coming back from injury or, or from, you know, slight setbacks, you do pull up a little bit sore from sessions. Um, this one, he's, he's a little bit sore again. So um, when I say have a look, it's go down, speak to the specialist get his opinion again of all right, where have we now progressed to. Um, he was going so well and you know, he was feeling really good about getting back out with the players on the track on Tuesday. Uh, but to, to see him today, it was, we had a good good conversation. We'll just, um, it'll be one we'll have to keep an eye on from here. Still a couple of weeks away, but how many picks are you planning to use in the mid-season draft? Yeah, good question. Um, oh, look, we'd like to, you know, we'd like to, Add, add a couple possibly, and I'm not going, I don't want to speak out of school yet. On list management, we've met a number of times around what that looks like for us, but um, you know, if we feel the right players there, we'd love to give them an opportunity, but also uh, add to you know, our squad. Um, and if that talent's right, well, you know, we've got three spots available, um, and the pick's there for us, we'll, we'll make that pick if, if we feel it's the right player that will fit into the culture we're trying to build. Um, there's obviously a fair bit of detail in around that of you know, whether that player wants to go for 18 months or, or whether it's for the remainder of this season. But um, there is a, there's a fair bit of talent there uh, that's available, uh, depending on where, where that pick finishes for us uh, and what other clubs do. Uh, we'll have to you know, wait and see what decision we make. Is there an area you think you need to target? Well, I mean, even prior to this, even prior to the last couple, or, or Murph's injury is probably the one that stands out, is that small forward. Even prior to Murph going down for 10, 8 to 10 weeks, we, you know, we, we want to have a look at that forward area, a, a little bit more zip and a, a little bit of polish in our forward half, some speed. Um, and with that comes, you know, you can find midfielders that are sort of in the, the same mould. So they're two areas that we've looked at um, yeah, in a lot more detail from a list management point of view, not not just for this mid-season um, possibility, but also for the end of the year. Is you know, uh, there are two areas we'd love to bolster in our group. Can I ask the weekly chat to go on this question and see if he's going to play. Well, I don't I don't know if he's going to play yet, but he's right in the mix. He's um, yeah. If, if we're talking about you know, the possible shuffle if we decide to, to shuffle from down back into our midfield and so on, and, um, and sort of not plug, plug's not the right word, but, but change our look forward to the ball. Uh, he's right in that mix. He, he's been in some really good form. Um, 
I'm open and honest, when you're working with a player like Chase, he's been there now for a couple of weeks, uh, two or three weeks playing at halfback. Um, you, you don't want to rush that. You don't want to sort of throw him back in and then lose the momentum he's built. But uh, watching him play at SNFL level, watching him train, uh, he, he looks like he's in fantastic nick at the moment. And he's confident and he's using his speed and he's backing himself in. And, you know, for a, for a guy that uh, we were playing through the midfield and, and he wasn't able to find the footy, he's now he's, he's averaging 18, 20 possessions at half backs. So, you know, we're hoping with that one that we've we've found a, a, a position that he feels really comfortable in, that it, he'll be able to take his game next level. Didn't answer your question at all, but <laughs> he's a chance. He's a chance. Crafted. Has he done that in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, and Billy's, Billy's similar. Like, um, yeah, from a, uh, from a coaching group point of view, we're so pleased with where Billy's taking his game. Um, and more, probably more importantly, the person he's become. He's act, he, he now understands what being a pro is. Um, and if you go back and look at some photos from last year, I don't want to embarrass him with this, but you look at some of his photos from last year of what he looked like on the field compared to now. He's, he's done the work in the, in the off-season. He's done the work right throughout the pre-season. He's one of our strongest players in the gym. Um, this, uh, when we brought Elliot in and Billy went out, he understood why we were doing it. Uh, he went back and showed us his weapon the very next week, kicked seven goals. He's been up and about with the group. He's almost almost taken on a leadership role, which I would have said a few years ago. I'm not sure Billy gets there. So so proud of what he's done. Um, again, he's he's right there in the mix. He's a, he's a different player to Elliot. Um, he's a he's a stand and deliver for us in the forward line. Like he's a pack mark sort of player. We're going up against the team. They're very good in the air. Um, you know, he's one that we're looking. Looking hard at at the moment whether he'll make us better. Right, this week. Zero, two goals in two weeks is almost a drought, isn't it? Well, I mean, we're not, we had no, we had nine, we had nine points at half time. So, general, how have you seen Tex? Look, Tex is he's he's been grinding it out like we all have, unfortunately, the last couple of weeks. The weekend was a the weekend was a slog. We we made it a slog. Um, the last thing we wanted to do was open the game up against Port Adelaide and, and play basketball up and back, but. Um, we've so we've had plans to manage Tex right throughout the year, and we'll do that this week. So he won't play. So no, Tex won't play on on the weekend. Uh, WA trip, uh, it's our furthest trip away. So we, you know, we've looked at this weekend and had it in the calendar as a possibility. Tex and I had to have quite a good chat. He does. He wants to play every week. Um, he feels good, uh, but he understands part of us getting him at his best and for the team playing at the level right throughout four quarters. Um, and as it sits at the moment, he's performing well for us. But there was always a conversation around at what point are we going to make sure you can perform at your best when we get into that latter part of the season. And so this one was in the diary. Right. Yeah. And we're going to stick to it. Um, as I said, he wants, he wants to play coming off, la off the weekend. You know, he felt like, I, I know I've got more in me than that. Um, by no means is it about performance at the moment that we're managing this is pre-planned and, and we'll make the call this weekend we think for the team to perform over there as well and for us to perform not just this week but the week after and so on um, yeah this week for text managed we'll have a look at then how we go ahead of the ball taller and that's where you, you mentioned Billy Frampton there's a possibility um, you know we've still got Riley down there Elliot that plays forward so you know we do have that cover as a key target and even Fogg at the moment, Fogg's doing some work on ball. There's a chance that, you know, well, while we manage Tex, Fogg might get that opportunity as a, you know, coming out of the cage. So it's just pure management. It's not heart related or it's not an injury for Tex. Yeah, no. I, mean, I don't know if you watch training. You train the house down. Um, so, some of that's it's interesting. You know, he was up and going. He's his normal leadership self out there. And no, there's nothing there at the moment with him. He's had over the last. I reckon three, three or four weeks, he's had a couple of little knocks to the calf and then there's been the scare and he's played and there's been questions around, oh, he's not right. That's not the case. Um, you know, we're now looking at this as he'll have this week off and then, you know, everything going well. He's right to go when we get back and, and play the next home game. 
um, and we'll continue to look at it through the second half of the year. We've got a, a plan in place, but that, that will change. That's very fluid of, of how we look at techs through the second half of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to ask one about the, the challenge of Nick Nat and the prospects. I, think, I know you spoke about Raleigh after the game on the weekend. Could, could a, a grudge match almost be maybe a good opportunity for, for Raleigh just to find some of the really high standards he's set last year? <laughs> he's in there now just putting his notes together. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Riley will look forward to that challenge. Um, I think he really enjoyed that last year, having to step up and uh, although he was nervous for a period of time when the message first went out that you know there was never an intent in it, he was just doing his homework and, and trying to be a professional. Um, might be a good idea for him to do it again. Um, I think Nick Nack knows where Rob <laughs> sees Nick Nack's weaknesses. You, it's easier said than done to expose him, though. But yeah, I, let, I mean Rob. Will, let's hope Rob steps up this week because we're going to need him too. Um, it's a, it's a big big gig for him.